The fossil fuel divestment campaign is one of the largest and fastest growing movements in the world. Students and worshippers across the planet are pressuring their universities and religious institutions to divest from fossil fuel companies. Ordinary citizens are urging their governments to do the same. Among those divesting is New York City's massive pension fund, and the City of London is set on following New York's lead. Yet, while the fossil fuel divestment movement is enormous and expanding, just how effective has it been at actually combating climate change? There is a debate within the environmental movement over what tactics work best. And a new study by prominent economists suggests divestment might not be the most effective strategy. In April 2018, the University of Massachusetts Amherst's Political Economy Research Institute, Perry, published a study that concluded that fossil fuel divestment campaigns have not resulted in a significant reduction in CO2 emissions. The Real News spoke with economist Robert Poland, the director of Perry, who co-authored this surprising study. What we're trying to do is, first of all, acknowledge the achievements of the divestment movement in terms of raising consciousness around the need for strong action on climate change and climate justice. The only question that we're asking is, well, how effective is it? And our measure is, how much do we see it contributing to reducing fossil fuel emit, uh, consumption, CO2 emissions, because in the end, that's the only way that we're going to stabilize the climate. You know, the evidence on that is us that the fossil fuel divestment movement is not uh, terribly successful, and it's not likely to be successful. Some divestment campaigners have pushed back against this study, claiming that it misdiagnoses the problem. The Real News interviewed Ellen Dorsey, the executive director of the Wallace Global Fund and a leader in the fossil fuel divestment movement. She said divestment is part of a larger strategy for global sustainability. The purpose of the fossil fuel divestment movement initially was to build a global climate movement. Prior to the early days of divestment, there was not a climate movement. There were pockets of advocacy around the world but we didn't have a people's movement, nor did we have a global people's movement. Calling for divestment and calling for institutions to divest their assets from fossil fuels is something, a, a, a tactic that any activist in any part of the world could do. And so it was, a, a first and foremost, a way to build power and to focus on the problem. As of 2018, global institutions with assets totaling $6.24 trillion have committed to fossil fuel divestment. That figure is up from just $52 billion four years before. The Real News also interviewed economist Tyler Hansen, who is a co-author of the study. He explained the background of the research and said he was surprised to discover that many institutions have divested solely from coal, not from other fossil fuels, and that of the $6.4 trillion in assets owned by institutions committed to divestment, only around $36 billion worth of investments have actually been divested. At first, um, when we were starting to calculate the amount of funds that have actually been divested, um, we looked into the, the $6.5 trillion to see who has actually divested. And what we found is that about 15 entities, um, so very small number of entities, um, often asset management funds and large pension funds, they accounted for about $5.7 trillion of those assets under management. So it was heavily concentrated in just a few firms. And all but one of those entities only divested from coal or a subset of coal, just a few coal companies. When you think about it, it, it does make sense. Um, coal is a much smaller industry. It's worth about, um, I believe in 2014, the, the data that we had, it was about $233 billion. Um, whereas the, the oil and gas industry is worth about $5 trillion. So it's a smaller industry. Companies have less invested in coal. And coal has been on a decline for a few decades now. So it's easier to divest from coal. So it's expected that the largest entities are just divesting from coal. 
So then from there, we, we estimated the actual funds divested, and that we estimated to be about $36 billion. So that's funds that have been divested or have been committed to divestment. It's a very large amount if you look at it just in absolute terms, but when you look at it relative to the $5 trillion fossil fuel industry, um, it's very small, and it's we wouldn't expect that amount to actually affect fossil fuel uh, share prices. But leaders in the environmental justice movement say this analysis misunderstands the goals of the divestment campaign. Annie Leonard, the executive director of Greenpeace USA, told The Real News that the main objective is political and social, not economic. Environmentalists seek to make fossil fuel corporations into pariahs. Now, we did not think, nobody thought that getting institutions to divest from fossil fuels would actually bring down the fossil fuel industry or reduce CO2. That was not the plan. Getting company, I mean, getting institutions and individuals to divest from fossil fuels is part of a much broader strategy with lots of different pieces. This piece is really about removing our support, removing the social validation of these companies, removing what we call their social license. We want politicians and others to think of the fossil fuel industry like they think of the tobacco industry. Like a politician doesn't want to see their picture in the newspaper shaking hands with the tobacco industry because we all know they are pariahs. The tobacco industry was willing to lie and undermine public health for their profits. It's the exact same thing with the fossil fuel industry. Their fundamental business model is threatening humanity. It is killing people right now. Yet we name our stadiums after them. We let them sponsor jazz festivals. We act like they're a functional member of society when they are literally killing people. And so the idea of advancing the divestment campaign was to withdraw our financial support, withdraw our social approval of them, really um, sort of tobaccoify them in terms of make them the pariah that they are. While he recognized that the divestment movement does have a political impact, Professor Polin emphasized that instead of spending time and energy on the divestment movement, environmentalists should be using their resources to pressure governments to regulate the fossil fuel industry and reduce emissions. I know it doesn't sound as exciting sometimes to say, well, we want to fight for strict regulations and uh, funds to go into to supporting these investments. But those are the things that are going to be the big drivers. If companies... If, if state governments realize they absolutely must convert out of fossil fuels into renewable energy because the law says if they don't, they'll go to jail, uh, that's what is going to drive uh, the, the change that we need. I would love to see a lot of the energy that is going now into the divestment movement into going into setting regulations and restructuring the economy uh, to directly get emissions down. Ellen Dorsey agreed that divestment is only one tactic among many, and she also stressed the importance in prioritizing the reduction in fossil fuel consumption. But according to Dorsey, divestment can and should play an important role in this process of reduction. First of all, divestment is not the only thing that's going to get us to what we need. So absolutely, we should be driving down consumption. I don't disagree with that at all. But reducing consumption is not going to change the problem, the core problem, that at this point, the industry has been so powerful. It has worked against regulation of carbon. And so we have to do, we have to drive down consumption where we can. We have to uh, embolden politicians to take regulatory action. But we as individuals can use the lever of finance as a people's lever of social change and all those factors together will work hand in hand to help us transition, you know, off the off the dependence on the fossil fuels and into a clean energy economy. Tyler Hansen countered, arguing that one of the problems with that investment movement is once institutions sell their investments in fossil fuel companies, other institutions buy those very same investments. So this is simply moving the money around instead of challenging the fossil fuel industry head on. There is the problem of neutral investors, those who don't care about the morality of their investments and who just want to make money. It goes back to those neutral investors. So most investors just care about profits. They just want to increase returns. And fossil fuels remain a vital part of our economy. 
And so those neutral investors, most investors are going to stay invested in fossil fuels. Um, when entities do divest, these other investors are happy to buy those shares. Professor Poland did say that another more effective tactic would be to force institutions to not only divest from fossil fuel companies, but to also reinvest that capital in renewable energy sources. To say that, for example, University of Massachusetts or the New York State City Pension Fund not just divest, but it requires them to reinvest to take the money that they are they're selling their stocks in, say, ExxonMobil and reinvesting it in renewable energy companies or energy efficiency companies. Um, that is certainly a, a major improvement because it's going to help uh, develop this still very small industry. It's, it's a growing industry, but it's still very small. So that's that would be good. That would be a good step forward. The debate over the fossil fuel divestment campaign continues. And while environmentalists may disagree on the most effective tactics to combat climate change, the world is already suffering from its impacts. And as time goes on and the planet gets warmer, the need to shift to a sustainable economy is becoming more and more urgent. Reporting for The Real News Network, I'm Ben Norton with Darna Noor and Sharmini Pires.